Please welcome. My name is Abu Ka of Future and thanks a lot for joining us. We're still counting down to May 29th when a new government will be ushered in. I mean, it's not particularly brand new. Uh, President Muhammadu Buhari will be beginning his second term in office and hopefully a new government will be formed going forward. Last Sunday on the show, we we're talking about the fact that he was away from the country and we're hoping that he will come back, you know, energized for the new for the new dispensation and he's back um there's a lot of talk now about what will be happening people speculated that the cabinet was going to be dissolved sometime last week didn't happen we don't know if that's going to happen before the handover date if it's going to happen at all seeing as it's the same president that's going to be in power and some people are pointing to the fact that there's a precedence with regards to um action and you know with, with the cabinet as a whole for the first time in a long time we had a four-year uh tenure of a president without the cabinet being reshuffled at any point so not a lot of expectations in that, uh, with, that, with that department, but hey, we can still talk about it. And that's what we're going to be starting off the show today with. I do with me, Farouk Abbas and Namdi Anakwe. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, <laughs> you heard all what, I, all what I just said. Um, there's not a lot of expectation. People are even speculating that there might not even be a change of cabinet uh, with this government. Are you, are you thinking the same thing? Especially, I mean, when the last uh, dispensation started in 2015, we, it took us about six months before a government was formed. Um, are you excited about what's to come? Well, for one, I'm not excited about what's to come, but I believe that there's going to be a change. I don't expect um, the current ministers to be retained largely. I mean, of course, it will be expected if he retains one or two of them, but I think it will be grossly insensitive to the yearnings of Nigerians to retain a lackluster um, cabinet, because if you look at it, the truth is that the, um, the unanimous opinion of Nigerians is that this cabinet is very dull and very colorless. Just a few of them have performed above average. So generally, a lot of them have performed below expectation. So who are those that you would say have performed above average? When anyone who has performed above average, I would say Fashola has performed above average in terms of um, housing and works. And when I say housing, I'm talking about, because um, housing has to do, affects the economy a lot. You know, he's in charge of Ministry of Housing when you're doing your um, registration of titles for federal properties in Ikoyi, in Victoria Island. We had a lot of investments that were trapped because they could not perfect their registration. They could not get their certificate of occupancy. Some as far back as 2000. But when Fashola came in, he cleared the backlog and he simplified the process. And when you have um, easy access to title, then the economy thrives, you can do transactions and all that. So cleaning up the, that, that's, that part of the um, housing sector, I mean, it tried, and it tried to develop some housing across, across the nation and all that. Then in terms of works too, we saw a couple of roads, infrastructure, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Seems to be the seriousness. Bragging points you know, of the yes, and, and for power too, they just came up with, with a regulation on metering. A lot of people have been complaining that they get estimated billing and all of that. Now it seems that all the discos are, 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 are paying um, attention to giving people meters. And once we have, once everybody is metered, we will see improvements in the power sector because the power sector will be much more lucrative and a lot of people will be able to throw in more investment. But for now, people can't throw in investments because they've not seen that they can make their money back. So once you see they see they can make their money back, they will, they will throw in money and money. So yeah. I think Fashola has performed very well. Um, I, in terms of who has performed again, I mean, it's so difficult looking for any other person who has performed above, above average. So I think Fashola, Fashola, the Minister of Communications could, it could have done better because education and um, communication that's um, um added by your sheet too because unemployment is very high in nigeria so if you have a minister who pays proper attention to technology to all these startups all these tech companies we can create more employment for the youths you know he's done a little but i think he could have done better you know yeah. but in terms of failure definitely um defense interior ministry of justice ministry of health ministry of labor in Gige, you know, they've performed woefully be above expectation. I don't expect that they'll get any public appointment for the next 10 years because they've, they've, they've messed up the old place. Now, do you, do you agree with him that um, it's been a very colorless... Um, is it a fair thing to say? Well, it's a fair thing to say in the sense that we've, uh, we, are looking, we are struggling to find anybody that has performed in this government. We are looking at the Ministry of Interior. We are looking at Defence, Transport, and Communications... Um, when he mentioned Fashola, I tend to agree with him because I see some um, infrastructure works in terms of when they floated a Sukok fund, a bond. You know, they raised $100 billion to finance some reconstruction uh, projects across the country from southeast to southwest, the, the Onitainugu Expressway being constructed, the Kanu Meduguri 
the um, Portacourt Enugu. You know, so I see, I see Fashola as somebody you can easily point out what he has done. But um, case by case uh, analysis of these ministries, you discover that the number one ministry that would have kept the country safe, the Ministry of Interior and Defense, failed woefully in the past four years. So I do not expect them to be reappointed. And also, um, it's, uh, it is incumbent on President Buhari to ensure that competent hands are appointed to man some of these ministries. Yeah. I want to talk about you know, some of his main promises when he came in in 2015, which were about the economy, um, security, I believe. <clears throat> um, those and corruption, I think those are the, those yes, are the three main things. Yes. So um, with, with those ministries in particular now that oversee this, and maybe the parastatals that oversee them as well, how do you think they performed? Um, the, the Minister of Finance, there was a bit of a shake-up at some point there. She resigned. Someone else took over. How would you rate the, minister of, the Ministry of Finance, you know, how they performed with the economy, also talking about, you know, um, Enelam, I think, is, I believe is his name as well. There's people who have sort of worked or believed well, to have been working to make well, the economy work. Well, um, I, I, I don't read Buhari highly on the economy because when you look at the reappointment of the CBN governor, it shows us the direction the economy is likely to go. You know, this is a capitalist economy, but the past four years have seen us operating like a socialist economy because you see CBN doing a lot of interventionist, uh, doing a lot of intervention in, in, in each sectors. You know, what we need is reforms. We need sectorial reforms in each of these sectors. When Obasanjo came into his second term, he appointed a lot of ministers who were able to carry out a number of reforms. He absolutely doing in the banking sector, trying to consolidate the banks and opening up the economy. You have the telecom sector revolution in the first term and also the continuing the second term. Also, you have um, a lot of uh, reforms in the public uh, procurement system and also the Ministry of Finance reforms. Now, you, you, when you talk about um, the next four years of Muhammad Buhari, I expect to see reforms in key sectors like the education, the health, the transportation sector, and also the, 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 the trade and investment sector. If we do not have reforms in, in some of these ministries and parastatals, we are not going to see any uh, improvement in our economic lives. A, the, the, uh, a situation where the, the CBN is always throwing money at each of these problems. Okay, the other day, the Anko Boras program that they spent over 100 billion trying to assist farmers in the north, nobody has been able to repay these funds. And we cannot even account for the progress or the performance of some of these. Uh, of these programs we have billions have been spent and nothing in return. The power sector too is a problem. They've pumped in over trillions of naira, yet we are still in darkness. So I expect the government, if we are supposed to see any economic uh, recovery, we should see ministers that will come on and provide two years to four year, medium time to long time roadmap that can revolutionize some of these sectors and create jobs and get the economy going. If you don't reform the sectors, you cannot create jobs. And if you don't create jobs, there will be stagnant, uh, uh, people are graduating on, on, in millions and we are not getting jobs and you know, everybody is trying to leave the country as a result of that. So I expect the government to focus on reforms you know, in some of these sectors. It's interesting that both of you sort of agree that you know, power, um, the Ministry of Power has, is one of the few that you can rate, even though Nigerians still complain a, a lot about that sector. But I want to talk about, you, you both have mentioned security now, but it's, it's something that it's not peculiar to this administration. I mean, we've had security issues for a long time. We've had this administration claim victory a few times with regards to Boko Haram and how they've managed to contain them uh, and actually take territory completely away from their hands. We have new security challenges, which, uh, you know, the government claims they, they were sort of caught on our ways with. Um, there's now, it's more widespread than it was in the past, where it was just in North East. Now we're hearing things in Zampara. The Niger Delta still has its issues. Biafra came up as an issue. The Middle Belt was boiling, you know. Is it not fair to say that, okay, a lot of these things, maybe because of how they sort of came up in, on so many fronts, became more difficult to handle than expected? No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. And I'll tell you that um, in 2015, before President Barry came on board, the economy was okay. The inflation was below um, two digits. And um, we only had um, insecurity in the Northeast. And as a matter of fact, the re major reason why Nigerians voted for President Muhammad Buhari was on anti-corruption and security because we were, we were disenchanted that the um, Boko Haram were taking over territories. So President Buhari came on board and 
he, he solved partially the security problem in the Northeast. When solving the security problem, he mismanaged the economy, and the economy became, went into shambles. And when the economy is in shambles, then there's restiveness, there's um, unemployment, and youths engaging, kidnap, terrorism, and all of that. So if he had not mismanaged the economy, this, the, situation, the security situation would not, have, um, would not have escalated beyond what it was. So I, I won't say that it was something unexpected. If they were a proactive government, they should have known that it was expected. And I say that they were the ones who caused the problem. Because if the economy is being well managed, they're not going to have all these sort of um, 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 problems. Anywhere you go to now, you see youths, about 10 of them, smoking and all that, taking drugs. You know, There's restiveness. If you go to the communities, rural communities in Oshun State or your state, you see youths that can kidnap you. About two weeks ago, we read in the papers that a lawyer was kidnapped in Oshun State. You know, Lagos, um, if you're in Jesha Road, somebody was kidnapped. You know, so if the economy is being married properly, we're not going to have all this problem. And in security, and another problem we have in Nigeria is in curbing security, in challenging security, we believe in just force, show of manpower, show of guns, killing people, attacking. No, in advanced crimes, security has gone beyond that level. Intelligence, they plan for the future. They engage people, you know, but because our own security architecture is based on crude methods, they've not, they've not digitalized it. They're not proactive enough. All they learn is going to go and raid somewhere, going to go and because, arrest so, people. Sorry to question you. How do you. How do you have a robust sort of security operation with an economy, for example, that's in recession? Considering that it was a tough four years for Nigeria, maybe we couldn't afford the sort of security personnel that we would have wanted or sec security sort of um, equipment or uh, support from government that, that would have Like my friend rightly said, it's not about infrastructure or equipment. I mean, it's about change of strategy. Let them have a policy. This is our policy. We want to target the youth. We want to prevent, you know, you prevent crime from happening. You don't wait until something happens. Nigeria will like knee-jerk approach. Something happens, you throw money at it or you throw force at it. You say you are doing operation dancing this, operation dancing that. They are not proactive enough. It's not about money alone. Let them change their tactics and let them create jobs for the youth. Because Unemployment is a waiting, the time bomb is so severe, we don't understand the level of insecurity that we're facing in this country. It's unimaginable. We don't, we don't expect it. We don't, we don't understand. Before in the Southwest, we don't talk about kidnapping, we don't talk about all these things. But now, people are scared. Everybody's going around with mobile policemen. People have their own private security. People that you don't even expect to have mobile policemen. You go for some meetings, they have five mobile policemen. So the insecurity is rife now. And the only way to curb it is to get our people engaged. Attack the economy full, full, full time. So I expect that if President Mohamed Buhari is coming and coming on board next time, the major, the major problem should be jobs. Stupid is jobs, is the economy. That should be 80% of its energy should be focused. Toward. Otherwise, if we don't do that in the next four years, it's going to be worse than what we're talking about. Maybe both of you, you have to be, you have to be using Mopo. You know, it's going to be very bad if we don't attack this unemployment and economy issue yeah. hands-on. Now, I want to come to you now because one of the biggest um, drivers we believe of any economy on a long-term basis sometimes is even education. You know, and for the first time in a long time, I don't even know that many students know who the Minister of Education is to start with. Um, but as unimportant as that is, there doesn't seem to have been anything exciting happening in education. Um, I think we saw the, the, the jam registrar, so I think yesterday or two days ago, we heard that he was crying when he was reading out the jam mm -hmm. results for the last uh, the yeah. last exams that were held because people now it has become so rife where people pay people to write exams so the decay is really deep and we don't seem to have any any sort of new initiatives with regards to how public education in Nigeria would work you know what are you how would you rate that minister and the ministry and what should we be looking forward to well it's, it's very simple i'll <laughs> give the minister f9 because we don't see any primary education, secondary to tertiary, we don't see any reforms at all. I'm, I'm somebody that believes in uh, public policy driven, uh, you drive uh, public policy with reforms. For instance, JAM shouldn't be existing. JAM should be scrapped. You know, some of these best private universities that we see, they don't use JAM in admitting their students. You go to, uh, you know, I can mention quite a number of them, they graduate some of the best students in Nigeria. We need to have a sectorial approach, a multi-sectorial approach to reforms in the education sector. One of my professors in those days said, education is not meant for everybody. The kind of resources that they allocate to public education is not enough. It's either you give the, uh, on the, at the tertiary institution side, it's either you give them financial autonomy, full autonomy, or you privatize these, private, uh, these universities. Oh, universities. Because... Um, I see government in students on funds. Uh, you go to university, you have what you call TED fund. TED fund is some percentage of tax that is derived from the federation account and shared among the universities to 
you know, help them with the funding and research. If we have some of these universities privatized and you have government coming in with bridge funds to assist indigent students to assist research, we are going to see an improvement in our education sector. You know, I, I don't even want government to intervene in the primary education because it is left for the local government. Yes, the true. local government is dead in Nigeria because the state government has hijacked the local government funds. So you don't see local government performing their primary function of trying to minister to education. So when you come to the state, you see government grappling with infrastructure. For, you see students, even in Lagos or some other, you see students sitting under the tree to learn. You know, without a very solid infrastructure and also a curriculum, you cannot have a very decent um, output in terms of the quality of people that you are going to produce from, the, from that sector. So Buhari, President Buhari needs to change the minister as soon as he sworn in for the second term and bring in somebody that can sector by sector, parasitter by parasitter, try to reform the education sector so that we can have, you know, it, 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 uh, you know some of the best um, tech giants that we have in the world. We are producing some of these best universities like Stanford, Harvard. In Nigeria, you don't have much of this going on. You know? yeah. So we, we have to look at a very targeted reforms in education sector. Speaking, speaking of our side of education, now, what do you, just as, on a general note now, because like I said at the beginning, we haven't had a reshufflement of this cabinet that we found out very surprising. Why do you think that was? Why do you think there was no move by government at any point to say, okay, let's try and see how we can work around things again after you maybe know, two years? You know, look at, I, 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 I read Buhari in terms of his, uh, some of the interviews that I granted in the past and some of his opinion. Now, Buhari is somebody... The president is somebody that believes in rewarding loyalty. You know, if you go to some of his ministers, minister of communication, these are people that have been with him from when he was in AMPP, um, CPC, and now APC. So he, um, that tells me that there is no regard in terms of quality or competence when these appointments are being made. The communication sector, we don't have reforms going on there. We have the minister of justice, you know, is a Buhari's loyalist. We have the Minister of uh, Niger Delta, Minister of uh, Science and Tech that told us we are going to be producing pencils. These are <laughs> Buhari's core loyalists when he was in the political. So do you think that's going to be different in the next four years, maybe? Well, I'm not very hopeful because when you look at the people that surround him, these are people that do not believe in driving um, qualitative outcomes in terms of yeah. you know, um, uh, uh, governance. But we, it remains to be seen how he wants to operate in the second term. In the second very, term, I, I expect him to try something different. Yeah, very, very, very quickly now before we go for it. We're going to talk about, you know, unemployment. We had a lot of initiatives that were started, Empower, you know, a lot of these uh, fund-based um, <laughs> programs. Do you think they've done well in that regard? I don't think they've done well. I, don't think they are, I, I think they are mostly cosmetic. There's no, there's no, there's no long-term approach. And we cannot, we cannot verify and know, okay, what's the impact of those schemes on the economy? Yeah. What's the impact of those schemes in the local government? In my local government, how many people have you empowered? How many people have you employed? If you look at them, LS, LS, LSITF in Lagos State, you know, they are doing theirs in a, very, in a very scientific approach. So you're saying they're not bad programs, they're just badly structured? Yes, just badly structured. And it's more of a um, political handout. There's no, there's no competence, there's no merit in appointing people who you give these schemes to. It's generally by asking for a voter's card, asking for their number before you give them all these things, our political affiliations. It doesn't help. But when you see good businesses or you identify people regardless of their political affiliations and you empower them and you allow people to believe that this thing is merit-driven, it's not about who you know, then we'll see the impact. Well, we're going to be watching this space. We're going to have it back, hopefully, when we have a new cabinet. Uh, fingers crossed on that. Hopefully it doesn't happen in November. Hopefully it happens before <laughs> November this time. Uh, thank you very much for being here today, Namdiya Farouk. Yeah, thank you. Thanks we'll for take a break me. now and be right back.